Thank you very much, Fabio. You left a lot of easy questions. <laughs> of course, really important uh, legal uh, uh, questions. And uh, let me try to see if it's possible to give you some uh, <laughs> idea for a solution of these uh, important issues. So we know that uh, in the quite a near future, we uh, the air traffic levels uh, are likely to double in 2020 or 2030. And uh, today, the air navigation service providers in Europe uh, uh, handle uh, around uh, 2006, um, uh, sorry, uh, 26,000 flights a day, but uh, in the future, it will, this uh, data will increase uh, considerably. So uh, that is the reason why, as uh, Paul uh, told us before, the European Union uh, um, set up uh, the packages, the single European packages, in order uh, to manage uh, this uh, uh, traffic and uh, uh, air transport in Europe. So thanks to this, now we have a normalized uh, regulatory framework on it, but several issues are still open, especially because the European packages regard the public law, the public aspect of the regulatory framework, and maybe it left open several issues on private law, and especially regarding the liability of all parties involved in the program. And here I try to list several issues already still open, as I, as I said, and the framework for the um, provision and supervision of cross-border services, I think it's not uh, yet uh, properly established in an, uh, it's a uh, vast number of member states. And uh, of course, because, for example, if you think just for the designation of the air navigation service provider, of course, they have to uh, do that according to the European uh, regulation, but it's a uh, uh, unilateral decision of member states. Uh, and, as I said before, there are no liability provisions in the single European uh, sky uh, regulatory framework. And, uh, of course, for this we have to see and we have to consider the national legislation for each uh, uh, different uh, matters. But the question is, do uh, we really need uh, a private law regulation on civil liability in the SES framework. Uh, um, Fabio told us that maybe we need a framework regulation on uh, civil liability on it. For example, if we consider what happened in, in the future in the um, SES environment, an accident happened. Uh, currently, we have in Europe a regulation regarding the liability of the um, air carriers and the liability of the uh, aircraft operators. And they are liable according to the European and international regulation, but we do not have a specific or similar regulations for other uh, entities involved or uh, which could be involved in an accident, for example, the navigation service provider or uh, airport operators or uh, uh, Genesis operators, uh, as we said this morning except from the product liability uh, and the liability of the manufacturer and so on. And uh, what could happen if an accident uh, uh, will be uh, happen inside the application of the uh, SES and SESAR technologies? Uh, 
And uh, of course, we, in the absence of a framework, uh, an harmonized framework regulation in Europe, certainly the um, first problem could be the conflicts of law and jurisdiction due to the different nationalities of the parties involved. And for example, the state immunity because uh, most of the air navigation service provider are still uh, state company like in Italy and they can invoke state immunity, for example. We can discuss if we can recognize it because they will perform commercial activities, but in any way they can invoke it and they can say that they are not liable for an accident. Or they, we can see the impossibility to identify the liable party or in which way we can uh, compensate the victims uh, or again if someone is uh, uh, obliged to pay according to the European law but is not the liable party, in which way this part can exercise the right of recourse against the real liable uh, party. So, for example, we have a very uh, well um, regulated sector regarding the air transport where the air carrier is responsible for damage uh, caused uh, for passengers but also for um, people on the surface. In this way, the European regulation is quite severe uh, uh, with the air carriers and it's becoming more and more severe. For example, the European Court of Justice now is uh, uh, applying the European regulation for overbooking uh, to the e European air carriers when they cause delay in their flights, for example, and they have to compensate just for the delay. So, and uh, again, as I said before, they are responsible and they have also the right of recourse against the liable party. For example, if the delay was caused by the airports, but it's possible in, in the current uh, legal framework to, to really exercise this right of recourse. I think it's hardly a, uh, applicable to this uh, uh, article established by the Montreal Convention. And again, as I said before, we have another uh, regulation, another international convention uh, on damage caused by foreign aircraft to third parties on the surface. It's applied in uh, um, some European countries and it is also a domestic law, like in Italy, in some European countries. And this convention introduced a strict and limited liability of the um, aircraft operators. So in this way, the operator has to pay. But the convention uh, um, established the right of recourse against the liable party and also the right of recourse of the insurer if the insurer compensates the, victim, the victims. But again, we think it's possible to exercise the right if we do not have a clear framework in Europe in order to recover, for example, the amount paid to the victims from the, uh, li uh, the, the liable subject indeed. And certainly more difficulties uh, will arise due to the fact that uh, the single European sky will be characterized by as we uh, said this morning, automation and interoperability among all the operators. All the operators which are and will be different <laughs> entities like uh, um, ATMs, airports and so on. So I think it's impossible to give a single solution, a single answer, and to set up a single uh, framework regulation for the liability of all uh, these operators. And maybe the solution could be to uh, try to regulate different, uh, different environments with different parties involved and uh, different technologies. 
Otherwise, I think it's impossible to find and normalize and harmonize uh, uh, legal framework for all um, these aspects uh, that we mentioned this morning. But maybe the, the um, regulations uh, could adopt the main in a principle uh, of law deriving from the private law already established and well known in Europe and inside the European countries. So let me try to do an exercise with you in uh, which uh, different uh, uh, issues and environments we can try to apply the most important uh, principle of private law in order to um, figure out a, a framework regulation uh, in the single European sky. For example, we can think uh, um, a, a regulation for the liability in uh, um, the, for the interoperability between uh, the parties involved in the air transport services or a regulatory system for a new technology uh, such as the global navigation satellite system or a regulatory framework for the use of uh, unmanned aircraft already mentioned by uh, Fabio. And um, considering that uh, um, we, we talk about SWIM, which is one of the most important uh, program uh, in Europe, maybe we can try to design a governance uh, system for SWIM. We have already done it uh, in the swim suit program uh, for uh, the European Union and we thought about our governance and indeed in the end we tried to find a solution for the governance of uh, swim. And for example in swim we thought that uh, one solution could be to um, uh, introduce uh, a code of conduct uh, for all the parties involved in SWIM, operate, aircraft operators, airports, uh, or uh, a navigation service provider. The code of conduct is a legal instrument adopt on a voluntary basis, but it could be introduced also by law, and maybe we can think to use this kind of instrument in order to um, uh, find several rules uh, harmonized between all the parties involved in the program and uh, a framework regulation for all the actors uh, involved. Indeed, a code of conduct for SWIM needs to contain compulsory rules which ensure the stability and security of the system and trustability of the system, but also a system of administrative sanction uh, for the infringement of uh, the above rules. And uh, if an accident happened, which will cause uh, damage uh, to uh, a uh, wide amount of properties or people and so on, the regulation for the third party uh, liability. And, uh, um, and it, of course, adopting the European uh, principle on it in order to guarantee the compensation to the third uh, parties. Uh, and again, for example, if in the single European sky we will use uh, a new uh, technologies such as uh, global navigation satellite system uh, where many parties will be involved, uh, again we have to consider that this technology will be used uh, between member states and will be uh, difficult to find who will be the person responsible for this in the absence of EU regulation. For example, it will be extremely difficult to identify not only the applicable law of jurisdiction, but also the definition of uh, damage compensation, what we have to pay and to whom, for example, and the civil liability regime. But uh, 
may be a possible solution for the introduction of a new technologies in Europe could be to apply on it the main principle which characterize the international conventions on civil liability in different fields, in the nuclear power or uh, in the uh, liability for the transport of all pollution, all oil, and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, these international conventions are characterized by these principles. For example, the strict liability of the liable party. We have to identify a liable party, a system of compulsory insurance for the liable party, up to the limit, for example, of the first level of liability, and we can also think to a supplementary compensation when the first tier of the liability of the liable party is not sufficient in order to compensate all the victims, for example. And for the new um, aircraft for uh, US, for example, I'm in the end of my presentation, uh, we can think, uh, but if the European Union is still working on it, uh, if we would like to uh, allow this aircraft uh, uh, to fly in the common airspace, this is possible. I think uh, also uh, just using the current regulation which we apply for the um, uh, manned aircraft with several adjustments. So I think that the problem is uh, slightly political than, than legal because I'm sure that we can apply the current regulation with several adjustments uh, considering the characteristic of this uh, um, uh, aircraft. So um, my conclusion are that uh, uh, Sing European Sky has no uniform provision on liability based on principles of private law but it's extremely difficult to give a global answer. And in addition, the future futures characterizing single European sky will require a liability legal framework in case of uh, damage caused uh, to persons and uh, property. And uh, this future legal framework will allow also uh, to exercise the right of recourse against the real liable party. And we uh, certainly need more than one new legal framework uh, in the single European sky to fulfill the different needs uh, of uh, different operators in the air transport sector. Thank you. Thank you very much.